Lucas, what was the seed that got planted that became this film? How did the idea come about? Um, the idea for the film started in 2009. Uh, I was 18 at the time. Uh, and I had just finished high school. And I was going to start film school. Um, and I read an article in a Belgian newspaper about a young 15-year-old girl that wanted to become a ballerina, uh, but was assigned male at birth. Um, and I had an immediate admiration for her, um, more specifically because for me it was really an example of someone that shows the truest version of herself at a very young age and wanted to pursue this dream, this ambition that she had to become a ballerina. I thought there was so much beauty in that. Um, and I contacted her because I wanted to make a documentary uh, with her. But at that moment in time, she didn't want to be filmed um, because she was going through the medical process and because it was too vulnerable for her to be on camera. So she de we decided to make something of it uh, without her having to be in front of that camera. And so we made a fiction film that became this film that you just saw, uh, in which the dialogues that we had during s five years were at the base of this script. And actually what, what was the seed for me personally as a director is that at 18, um, I w was not able to be as honest as she was because I myself... Um, was not okay yet with my sexuality. It took me three more years. So in a way, she was an, a personal example for me of choosing uh, honesty. And that was my admiration to her. But when I got to know her, when we were really talking, I found out that even though she had been so honest early on in her life about who she was, she had now come at a point that she really wanted to fit in. Mm. She wanted to be like the rest. As all teenagers do. As all teenagers do. And there, I really recognized that feeling. Uh, and I found what I really wanted to talk about, about that moment in our lives where we want to fit in rather than stand out. And yet it gave you more latitude. You were lucky in a way that she didn't want to do the documentary because you got to tell the story your way. Yeah, that's true. I mean... We we got to shape it, we got to craft it, we got to make it actually... This is very close to Nora's story, story, but it's a different story. It's Lara's story. And in a way, I think what was so good for me to see is that if I would have made a documentary of Nora, then it would be a film for me and an audience. But this way, having Nora involved in the fiction of it, it also became a tool for her to let go of a certain moment in her life because she used the making of this film as a way to distance herself from something that had happened in the past. So I'm very proud that this film was not only something for an audience and for me, but that it's also something for her. How closely involved was she in the making of this? <clears throat> um, during the writing, she was very involved. She was. We had a lot of talks um, about what we could do with a script like this, about with a character like this, what she felt like was important to show or not show. Um, and then during the casting, I wanted her advice because of course the casting for this film was very challenging, but I really wanted her to agree with the person that was gonna play Lara. Um, and then in the pr preparation with Victor, they met each other a lot. She came to set a lot. And if Victor describes it, he says that he got confidence by the fact that she stayed there. The fact that she stayed meant for him that she saw something that was good. And that gave him a lot of confidence. This is the first time that this person acted. Uh, 14 when I met him, 15 when we shot this. So, and he was very, very nervous of not doing her justice. And so the fact that she stayed on set, the fact that she was there, gave him the confidence that he needed to, to play this part. So obviously the, the film would rise or fall on the casting. How on earth did you find Victor? Um, well, the casting was the most difficult process of the production. 
Um, we had been casting for a year and a half. Um, we had seen over 500 young people, of which uh, trans girls, um, boys and girls. And the very challenging thing for this part was that um, you needed to be 15, dance on the level that you can dance a choreography of Sidi Larbi Sharkaoui, which is not easy. Uh, act, carry a feature film, um, and represent his identity in a way that it is complex, you know, that people will be looking at that. And so we didn't find all those things in one person, and that was very difficult for us. And then all of a sudden we started casting the secondary roles because we didn't know how to continue with the main role. And Victor applied for one of the other dancers in the film. And when he came, my whole team, we were looking at each other because we were like, oh, wait. It's this like a scene from a movie. Yeah, exactly. And we have felt this immediate attraction to this person. By the way, he moved. By the way, he positioned himself in the group. And you could immediately feel that it was someone that was very close in a lot of ways to Nora. If you know Nora, you've you felt the, the similarities. And so, um, so yeah. Belgium is split by language and culture. Yeah. And you have, you reflect that a little in this film, mm -hmm. in the languages. Was that important too, to get across in your story? Yeah, I have in my, all my, in all my films, all my short films, I have always used N, uh, Flemish and French. We live in a country that is divided by its language barrier. And our industries are divided as well. So we have a Flemish industry and a French. And I just like the idea of identifying as a Belgian filmmaker because I like the idea of um, working together. And I also like the idea that I can work with people from the and the French and the Flemish industry, but also with actors from both of them. And in this script, in a way, it was very handy because we needed a rupture as the family moves to another environment. We could also make it in the script a rupture in language. And so for us, that was a way to, again, integrate and Flemish and French. I think for me... Um, you have some political parties that want to separate our country, which is a stupid idea. So I think it's important to unify in those moments. Please thank Lucas Don. <laughs>